This article from The Conversation talks about the cause of lithium-ion battery fires, why they're so intense, and how they should be fought. Welcome to another episode of the Cross of Connections with Jack Wayne podcast. My name is Jack. We talk about the business of science and how this translates into headlines that may help us understand the jobs of the future. Two large lithium-ion battery fires have been reported in Australia, one that happened in a Sydney airport car park and another one in a battery storage facility here in Queensland. When these lithium ion battery fires break out, the damage is very intense. These fires last a lot longer than you would think they would last. They could leak out some toxic chemicals depending on the makeup of those batteries. The technology within these batteries is fundamentally based upon lithium ion architecture. They are the same batteries that fuel things like your phone as well as your laptops, condensing a lot of of electricity storage capacity within a small amount of space. And when you condense this much energy storage capacity into a small space, and also you put it within the confines of a vehicle that is moving around and it is not in a stationary position, it is potentially bumping into other cars, there is a risk both of damage to the battery itself as well as overheating if you're driving around in different environments where the environmental temperatures are affecting the temperature of the car itself. And when these EV batteries overheat, something called thermal runway is a vulnerability here where the chemical reaction from this overheating can either lead to or can be a result of the fault in a battery that either comes from too high of an ambient temperature in the surroundings or some kind of damage to the battery itself. And when you know it, it's gonna catch fire. And these fires can build in their intensity over time. And what's really interesting is that there are attempts at making these batteries and battery packs even bigger to accommodate even more energy storage capacity. And there are these large battery packs called mega packs. They're large lithium based batteries designed by Tesla energy storage to stabilize the grid and prevent power outages across these circuits. And when they catch fire, it could basically stay on fire for an enormous amount of time, potentially burning for several days. What happens when a fire breaks out within a battery storage facility and certainly within lithium ion batteries, the idea of putting out the fire needs to be quite carefully moderated because the first thing we think of is put water on a fire. But depending on the kind of fire it is, the extinguisher cannot just always be water. It might need to be chemical. It may need to be a powder-based kind of extinguisher. These kinds of lithium ion batteries, the the flame that's been produced when you add water to it, it could actually cause the fire to intensify and the water can react with the lithium to form a flammable hydrogen gas and that makes it even more perilous. So you really need to know what you're walking into if there is a electric vehicle battery based fire in your immediate vicinity and you can use water to cool the battery down you will need up to 40 times as much water as a normal car fire so sometimes it's safe to just let the battery burn of course you could also sprinkle fine water mist suppress the fire or use specially designed class d fire extinguishers or dry chemical fire extinguishers designed for putting out electrical fires these are pretty standard standard operating procedures this kind of extinguisher with either sodium chloride powder or pressurized argon these can really form this oxygen excluding crust that will suffocate the fire of the oxygen needed to keep it going and put out that fire as safely as it can but if you're not sure how to do that or you don't have access to an extinguisher it appears that the safest thing for EV owners is to just let the fire burn and let it burn and notify the relevant authorities and make sure you're not in the immediate vicinity of that fire. But again, this is somewhat of an unfair headline because vehicles actually catch on fire all the time. And these two publicized incidents, one at a Sydney airport, one at a battery storage facility in Queensland, does not necessarily represent the norm or the status quo for EV owners. And the next article talks about the incidence and frequency of electrical vehicle fires and how rare they may be. The headline being electrical vehicle fires are very rare. The risk for petrol and diesel vehicles is at least 20 times higher. Despite all of the recent incidents in the media around electrical vehicle battery fire, it is actually very rare. Available data suggests that fire risk is between 20 to 80 times greater if you're driving either a petrol or diesel vehicle. A database that's keeping track of this is one of EV fire safe electrical vehicle battery fires worldwide over a 13 year period, 2010 
2010 to 2023, out of 30 million electrical vehicles worldwide, there's less than 400 verified fires. And in Australia, there's only four electrical vehicle battery fires. So really the incidence of these events is very low. It's just because it's new technology, people are scared of innovation and any negativity catches buzz and catches media attention way more readily.